Let's see. Uh, okay, just after Bloomberg's taken office, the cruise around Times Square, which was still undergoing the final stages of Disneyfication, something that clearly made tourism far worse than pornography ever was. <laughs> when the novel opens, tall blonde hookers have been turning up dead in the area. Gladys, a 22-year-old rookie who loosely fits the profile of victims, gets a 30-day transfer into homicide. Due to her flaky nature and driving ambition, she tries employing what she learned in her kundalini yoga classes. I hope, I hope no one here takes kundalini yoga. <laughs> uh, hoping that it might give her an intuitive edge. She's partnered up with Bernie Farrell, an old detective who has little patience. This excerpt is modified for the reading, so excuse if it's a little choppy. It opens when they've just finished canvassing the area for witnesses of the latest murder. Um, all right. My eyes are not too good, so you can see the lights. Join the club. Yeah. You know. Okay, here we go. Wait a second. Oh, okay, I'm seeing words. As we were heading down 8th Avenue, uh, on 41st. Hey, does, do you have a small flashlight in the back? I have one. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a, all right. Do you want me to stand? Or in the just no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, I was. My name was Ed. I was a poet a couple of years ago. I think I met you. You look. What a coincidence that you had that All right, let's try doing this. Uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. That's not gonna work. All right. How about um, the air? I, I can do that. Oh, no, it's, it, this will be all right. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> all right. Let's go off to a really good start here. <clears throat> Let's see. As we were heading toward 8th Avenue on 41st, <clears throat> we spotted a guy in a bright red day-glow vest who was touching a pencil-like object to each lamppost he passed. Excuse me, Bernie said, flashing his shield. But what the fuck are you doing? This is an AC locator, the man said, holding up a small wand. They were for Con Ed. <clears throat> and we're checking for live posts because of that woman who just died. A graduate student had recently been electrocuted along with her dog <clears throat> by a live junction box in the East Village. Remember that? Yep. <clears throat> you went around here two days ago, Bernie asked. I've been checking the posts in the area for the past couple of days. Why? Bernie took out a photo of Katie Duffy's face taken at the morgue and showed it to the con ed worker. You don't remember seeing her. Ooh, you're kidding, the worker replied, shocked. She might have been fighting with someone, I added. She might have screamed. <clears throat> if I saw that, I would have helped her. How about this guy, Bernie said, taking out a mugshot of Nisa O'Flaherty, a convicted felon and sadist, but no murderer. You know what, said the worker. I actually do remember this clown. He was pissing against the lamppost on 9th Avenue as I was trying to get a reading. You sure it was him? Yeah, and when I told him the post could be live, he said that would be the only buzz he'd get without paying a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> it hardly seemed like much to go on, but Bernie pointed out that O'Flaherty's SRO was only a few blocks from the crime scene and suggested we pay him a surprise visit. And charge him with what, public urination? <clears throat> Bernie didn't reply. Where'd you get that photo of Katie? I didn't know you visited the morgue today. Another great weapon, Bert left me, that was his old partner and mentor, in addition to his collection of fabulous bow ties, was the simple Boy Scout slogan, be prepared. You really miss him, don't you? It was kind of like having your mother for a partner. Nothing was ever good enough, but in fairness, he would have had this case closed by now. It was freezing out, but no better inside of Flaherty's flea bag hotel. <clears throat> Before he got to the clerk's little office, I stopped Bernie and asked what we were doing there. Call it intuition. He used that secret word. <clears throat> I just feel like something's up. Based on what, I asked. We have no new evidence. We were already up here with his parole officer when we could have tossed his room, and you didn't want to do that. So isn't this just a waste of time? <clears throat> Don't we need to talk to Frank Duffy before he leaves work? Bernie stared at me. Last I checked, I'm in charge. He stepped up, <clears throat> he stepped up and asked Hal, the clerk, if he had seen the convicted sex offender early last night around the time of Katie's murder. No, he's in a binge right now, so he might have been in his room at the time. A drinking binge? Yeah, what else? They saw him with a gallon-sized plastic bottle of scotch uh, yesterday morning. When did this binge start? Yesterday morning. <laughs> Is he up there now? No, I saw him leave about 10 minutes ago. What's up with the heat? I asked. Is the boiler broken? No, no, it's just a little slow in warming up. Inside Hal's cozy booth, a small space heater was churning at his feet. Look, 
I want to grab him where he feels most vulnerable. But the little roach feel like he has nowhere to crawl, Bernie explained to me. Turning to Hal, he asked, Do you mind if we wait in the hallway in front of his room? Tell you what, said the clerk reaching behind him. This is the key to the room before his. It's a little warmer in there. Thanks, Bernie said, taking it. We had just missed the elevator, which was as slow as the geriatrics who used it, so we took the stairs. As we climbed, I suggested that if Katie was killed last night and O'Flaherty was drunk all yesterday, there was no way he would have been physically able to commit the murder, especially if he didn't drug her first. Trust me, Bernie responded, alcohol affects different people differently. Most get horny and lazy, but there are a few who get angry and energized. When we reached the top floor, Bernie listened outside O'Flaherty's door for a minute. Then he knocked, no answer. He tried the door, it opened. He looked inside briefly, then closed it. Don't worry, I'm not going to blow it on some technicality, he said. We went down the hall to the room Hal had offered us. Inside was a stripped, stained mattress on a heavy metal frame, and an old end table held a clunky old phone. It didn't feel any warmer in the room than it did in the hallway. As we sat there silently, I realized that if some mystical revelation were ever to occur, this had to be the time and place for it. I focused on breathing deeply and tried to evict my ego from the random thoughts that buzzed through my head. Soon only one image remained, the postcard of the Diana statue I saw on O'Flaherty's wall when we first investigated. I don't know why I had envisioned that image, but why had he taped it up in the first place? Hey, I suddenly heard. You sound like a pug with a head cold. Cut it out. <laughs> Sorry. My pranayama breath of fire had gotten too loud. I closed my eyes and breathed through my mouth. <clears throat> you know, when they built the World Trade Center, Bernie broke in, they also put up all these medium-sized office buildings around them uh, to give them, what do they call it, architectural transition between the Twin Towers and the rest of the area. Now that the towers are gone, those transitional buildings make no damn sense. Looking out the window, I saw what had sparked his odd comment. Eastward, over the snow-encrusted lots whose buildings had recently been leveled, behind a turn-of-the-century theater that was being retrofitted into a multiplex, above the Disney store and Madame Tussaud's wax museum, there was a clear view of some of the skyscrapers that made up the new Times Square complex. Bernie, I just want to remind you that my 30-day assignment's almost up, and... What's the address of Katie's office building again? He interrupted, staring transfixed at the new high-rises. Um, three, three times square, I think. And that's the one in the northeast corner, right? Yeah, the one with the fly swatter roof. I recycled his joke. Why? Why? Typically patronizing, he didn't respond. Bernie simply planted himself at the window and stared eerily out. I folded my arms together, sat in silence, and watched as the afternoon sky darkened. In the adjacent lot, I saw a big, hairy rat slowly making its way across the hardened crust of snow towards some distant crack. I had a sudden realization that I hadn't seen rats in a while. The city really had made progress in eliminating undesirables. For a moment, I was nostalgic for the urban wilderness, the rat seemed vaguely bucolic, more like a, an evicted squirrel or an endangered groundhog. <laughs> I was awakened from my musings by Bernie snoring and realized that I was shivering uncontrollably. It, was, it, was, it wasn't even five o'clock and the sky was as black as coal. I'm fucking freezing, I said, rising to my feet. There's a deli on the next block, how about a coffee? Light and sweet, he mumbled without opening his eyes. I peeked out the door. An old lady was standing there in a nightgown like a frozen ghost. As I walked past, I realized she was leaning against the radiator, which emitted a faint hiss, as if letting out its dying breath. You should call the heat hotline, 311, I suggested, though I don't think she heard me. I took the stairs down, dashed the lobby, and out to the well-heated corner deli where I got at the end of a long line. I was grateful that it moved slowly enough for me to get my core temperature back up. When it was my turn, I ordered two large cups of coffee, and in another minute, I was back in the meat locker lobby, holding the burning brown bags against me to keep warm. 
seniors are standing around and the clerk is watching his portable TV as I pass through. When the dented elevator door opened, I patiently waited as the frozen lady who had been holding onto the radiator slowly exited. Suddenly a violent force slammed into me, throwing me forward. As I fell to the floor, I whacked my forehead against the back wall of the elevator. The hot coffee crushed under my chest, scolding me from belly to neck. As I struggled to get up, my assailant jumped on my back. Grabbing my hair, he slammed my head against the floor. The elevator door slid shut with him on top of me. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> well,